G'day trendsetters, today I'm coming to you from Land Shark Bicycle Headquarters here in Oregon. John is expecting me, let's have a shop tour. There he is, there's John of Land Shark Bicycles. Instead of listening to me talk garbage, let's get him on camera and get the story and how he builds bicycles. So welcome to Land Shark. Well, you know how I got started. The first bike I ever built was a Tandem back in 83. My sister went on a ride with the, um, a friend and they came home. I said, where'd you get the bike? He said, I made it. I said, oh, I'd like to make one. He goes, really? I said, yeah. So he showed me how to step by step. It was a big bitcher paper, you know, laying the tubes out there. He built it in the parents' woodshed with a piece of string and a vise and a hacksaw. And uh, I think it took me like two months to build that, you know? So, and then it was friends and family and then People actually wanted to buy them, so that's how it got, got going. Now, you built some bikes for some pretty famous pro riders. Here, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, that happened because the Levi factory was closed. They were moving, and the Levi Raleigh team needed bikes. Um, and the junior rider knew I built bikes, so I built him a Raleigh. And then he told the, the senior team, which had like the seven best riders in the country, and it was Andy Hampson and Greg Demjan, the team manager, came over to the parents' backyard to the woodshed. And I didn't have much to show them. I had my bike in a tube set. And uh, they said, yeah, let's do it. So they wanted me to build uh, seven bikes in two weeks. And at that point, I was doing like a bike a month. And I said, yeah, I can, <laughs> I can do seven bikes in two weeks. And uh, that took, uh, that's when I learned motion management, you know. And then they also had me build, they had me paint seven uh, bikes to match their uh, vitises that they wanted me to paint to look like uh, steel bikes. Speaking and all, and all, the bike, all the guys loved them. Speaking of paint, yeah. you, some of your paint is wild to say the least. Well, actually, my, my first customer back, I think it was 84, he wanted me to paint the bike like uh, the Pink Floyd uh, album cover, Metal. And that was pretty trippy. It was a lot, a lot of dripping paint. And so anyway, I like doing things that haven't been seen. And uh, I got one going on today. It's called a magic brushstroke, where it's a brushstroke that actually changes color, which is, it took me 30 years how to figure out how to do it. But that's a good one. Yeah. John, Lady yeah. Shark 9, where did it come from? It came from the uh, Saturday Night Live Chevy Chase scene, where he'd knock on the door. He'd be wearing a big shark head knocking on the door trying to convince people to open it up. You know, candy gram, half a gram, and then they'd open the door and get eaten. So it was either land shark, and I had another choice, was gonna be atomic pile, and I went with the land shark. But land shark's a great name. A lot of companies would love to have that for a bike company, so you know, I'm glad I got it. Uh, give us a tour of the shop, if you don't mind. Okay, this half of the shop is where I do all the, the building here. So this, this is the frame jig. This is where all the tubes get loaded. This is made in um, Italy. I bought it in 87. I think it was like $4,500 and they, they go up, um, they were supposed to go up like $1,000 every year. So now they're like, um, I don't know if you can get them anymore. But I use this to build all, it's, a design, it's designed to build prototype bikes. So there's no bike that you can't build in this. I even build the tandems in the frame jig. Anyway, it's built like 7,000 bikes now. Wow. Yeah. And then um, here's so this frame jig. I've got uh, this is where I miter the tubes over here on a lathe, which is kind of backwards. Usually people miter them on a mill, so I spin the uh, I spin the cutter and the chuck, and then I hold it with the V block. Just going to show you some carbon. Here's carbon. After they get glued together, then they get wrapped with carbon. This is 12K. I don't know if you heard about the 12K, but if you take one piece of it and if you fluff it up enough, there's actually 12,000 strands in one piece there, which is people always like that one. And you um, transitioned to carbon. You're full-time carbon now, correct? Yeah, full-time for the last 13 years. Okay. It was my last steel bike, so now it's it's carbon all the time. Sometimes they get asked if I'll do steel. I don't think so. Done, done with fire. Yeah. <laughs> so basically the frame jig is going to hold the tubes while the glue sets. Then after the glue sets, the bike comes out and then I'll um, sand the uh, fillet of epoxy. So it's like a, almost like a fillet braised bike. 
And then after that, the um, bike gets wrapped, the joints get wrapped with, right now this is dry fabric, but this, gets, this will be wetted out with epoxy. And then the different joints will be wrapped. I'll show you here. So this is a wrapped joint. This already has primer on it though. So the, the joints will be wrapped. You know, this, and this stuff drapes really well because you can see how it kind of co contours on there. That's called the drape. Two, twill, 12K. It'll be wrapped up. So the bottom bracket like this may have like maybe eight layers. The head two might have 11 layers. And then, then that gets put in a vacuum bag. Then after it gets cured in the vacuum bag, then it gets sanded and then primered. So that's where you are with this. And, and the down draft table has all my, all my tools. This is my favorite. This is a Dynafile. This is for sanding. A DC motor. 20 volt DC motor on it with its own power supply and uh, it's brushless so you can't stall it and it's really powerful. I got a fleet of those. Sanding is a passion for you. Kind of. Abrasives. Abrasives. Yeah. <laughs> I got a $900 vac uh, vacuum that sucks up concrete dust. That's nice to have. It's kind of evolved over the years, you know, downdraft table, chop saw. And I don't have a place for the chop saw, so every time I need to do it, I always pick it up like this and go like this and then do and cut, you know? And I feel like I don't have to go to the gym every day when I do my cutting. No, it's a fun thing. I mean, if we had time, we could build the, put a tandem together. So this is the key to success. You take a um, reciprocating saw and you take the blade, put a little Velcro thing, and then you can put your different, um, different uh, abrasives on there. And so then, for filing in, not for yeah, for filing, for getting to the tricky parts, okay. you know? The parts where you gotta use your finger, you go like this then. You know, down the bottom bracket. Well, I remember when the LA Times did a story and they wanted to see me paint, so we would just, I put water in the spray gun. You know, so they could be there where I'm spraying the water so it looked like clear coat. And this is new here, the Velcro on the edge here to hold the pieces. I came up with that last week. Very innovative. Yeah, instead of being on the floor. Smarter, not harder. These are the uh, seat stays. These are molded in Idaho by Brian Williams. He's the only guy um, who molds my stuff. Here's, that's a uh, seat stay. Here's chain stays here. That's the chain stay. Here's the seat stay. And then he also does a, a carbon um, dropout for me. And then um, here's, uh, here's down tube. Here's a little molded section. Here's a top tube seat cluster. That's kind of cool. And here's the uh, biaxial down tube. So it's oval this way, and then it goes oval horizontal or vertical. And at the other. all USA made carbon. Yeah. Very cool. Straight uh, tubes that are made on a mandrel, steel mandrel. Those are made in Minnesota. These are, these, this is seat tube material. And this is like uh, down tube, top tube, boom tube for tandems. And this used to be a shoe rack. <laughs> and I made it into a, I made it into a, my catcher, you know? So it used to all be in boxes, and I tried to get it off the floor and then put it on, a sh on the shoe rack. So the tandem here, this is um, all tube to tube with the custom motor mount. And then um, the way it looks, it kind of looks like a Philip Ray steel bike, but the tubes are a little fatter, you know. And the, right, right now, I think the frame weighs four and a half pounds. This is going to, this will be a, a black bike with um, the magic paint stroke paint job on it. And the whole thing with the motor will probably weigh about 40 pounds. So how do you connect the e-bike motor with two crank sets? That's kind of interesting. Oh, uh, that's tricky because basically um, you, if you want to have both riders energize the motor for the assist, you have to um, have the uh, crank arm on the motor has to have a chain ring, which it doesn't have a chain ring. So either you have the bonded chain ring or welded on there. So it's a little, it's off the uh, beaten path. But um, otherwise, if you don't do that, only one of the riders is going to energize the motor. So one rider is going to feel the kick and the other rider is just going to feel nothing. So. Must feel the kick. Yeah, you got to feel the kick with the electric motor. Oh, that's, the, that's the fun of it. Oh, this isn't even paint. This is um, metallic crayons. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, either did I. My, my daughter brought them home from the art store and I said, hey, can I try those? So that's me metallic crayons. In the sun, you can see a metallic thing on it. I clear coated about three clear coats. Rainbow sparkle, okay? The secret behind your finishes. Yeah, the rainbow sparkle, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Yeah, actually, it used to be a booth, my old shop. For 20 years, we lived like 
over the couple hills over. And I didn't want to have a um, booth. I wanted to have it open so I could listen to the Led Zeppelin while I'm painting, you know? So I, this is like a, a spray wall now. But this is something I painted this morning. I haven't turned the oven on, so it's still a little dewy. But this is done. Hopefully this is done. This is, I just put the last clear coat on it. And then I'll get you this, the jersey so you can see what it's supposed to look like. This is the fighting bobas. Okay. That's a pretty good match. And here's the, uh, there's the, you can show the head tube here, the fighting boba guy. Painted the stem because it looks nice. And the fork's in there. Yeah. So you got a really crazy variation of a park tool stand. Right, well. right. Well, basically, I took the park stand, which is supposed to be bolted to the ground. I bolted it onto a table saw base, which is mobile. Then you can, you can lock it out so it doesn't move. OK, and then um, instead of having the AC power cord, because the motor is actually 24 volts, I have a, um, a bike battery. To, uh, to power it up. So now when you need to work on the derailleur, you don't have to bend over. You can just crank it, crank it as high as you want. So you can get back here and work on the derailleur, you know? I'm too old to bend over. I'm with you. It has the ergonomic for us old yeah. guys. Yeah. yeah. Jason, well, thanks for coming over and visiting Landshark. Thanks um, for having me. Yeah, no, it's fun. It's yeah. fun to show it off. And good luck in the race tomorrow. Yeah, it's a okay. ride. I'm, uh, a ride tomorrow. <laughs> I'm cruise, man. Alrighty, train centers. It'll be good. Okay, thank you, okay. John. Yeah, thanks a lot.